All right, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about using context variables within Talent for your data integration. Now, what we're going to cover is defining what a context variable is. We're going to talk about why a context variable is very important and how you can use it within your jobs to make your development very easy. And then we're also going to talk about leveraging context variables as built-in variables versus using context variables within the repository. If you've uh, watched with the, in the previous videos that we've made or in the previous lectures, you realize uh, us talking about, you know, built-in properties versus repository properties, especially around creating metadata. Now, this this lecture will be a continuation of that. It'll be a continuation of everything that we talked about. But the focus here will be around context variables. And believe it or not, a context variable is something that is so so powerful it's one of the most versatile tools that you're going to be using as a developer as a talent developer and anyone who has done any programming maybe java python you might be familiar with the idea of variables where you you define variables and you use the variables within your programming context uh, it's not very different from what you're going to see here in this case if you haven't done any programming before don't 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 worry it's going to be something that's accessible to you as well very easy and this concept is something that really differentiates people that are just beginning to program uh, or develop with talent versus people who actually know thing that the thing that they're doing right and this is you know something that you know once you're thinking about building jobs that you end up taking to production and using a production setting context variables becomes very key to make sure that you have a right software development uh, life cycle sdlc so this is a very powerful lecture and uh, we're going to dive into it and show you some examples around working with context variables so we're going to switch over to studio as as uh, as always let's switch over to studio and here we have a, a blank canvas to work with i have a folder in here called context variables and we're going to have a plain job here called context vars context variables which we're going to be working with the first exercise that I want to do is before we dive and start talking about what the context variable is, is just to build a very simple job that writes something to the screen and then we're going to work in that job to modify it and talk about what the context variable is. So let's assume that the task that we have to perform is to read a file and to write that file to the screen. So we can browse into the folder where we have our customer file. This is the file we're going to be working with. And the goal for this exercise is we want to read this file. We want to write this to the screen. You can see the path for this file is on my desktop uh, environment. And I want to be able to read this file and write it to the screen. So let's go back to Studio. It's very straightforward to do. Instead of using the repository here, I'm going to do it in a different way. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, why I'm doing it in a different way. So let's actually go to the file input here on the palette area and bring over that component to the screen file input delimited and once we select that component we can go in and we can see it's browsing to some file that it needs but of course we know this is not the file that i that we we've been looking for so let's go ahead click browse select from the desktop that we want customer csv now the path looks right but one of the things that we need is to specify the schema of that file one way that I'll do instead of manually defining the schema, let's check that the schema is currently empty. It's empty. From the previous lectures, uh, you realize I talked about how we can copy schemas, especially the one on generic schema and bringing it over to a file so we can know how to read that file. I'm going to do something very similar here. So I'm going to go to the customer demo, which we did earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and browse Actually, let's do it a different way. I'm going to open this. I'm just going to open the schema directly. So instead of clicking on the customer demo, I'm clicking on the metadata piece. And so this gives me the schema in the repository. So if you see here, I can select everything that I want from this schema. Click that, hold down the shift key, select everything. Now I can copy that schema. Once I've done that, I'm going to go back to my component. I'm going to edit schema. There's no schema to it. Again, we need a schema, a schema to tell it how to read this file. So that's why that's important. Because I've copied that, I can come in here and I can click paste. 
now I know how to read that file. So customer name, customer number, and all that good stuff. I have a definition for it. I could type this, but I mean, as you can imagine, typing this will be very time consuming. So that's why, you know, understanding how to copy schemas from different locations and bring them over is something that uh, is very powerful to do. So let's do OK. Now I have my file. I have my schema. Uh, the delimiter here is uh, not a semicolon. It's a colon. So always very important to change that. The heading is going to be the first row. Again, something to change that. I'm doing all of this manually, even though I have it defined here, just so we can see the process. If you haven't watched the previous videos uh, around metadata and creating connections, uh, go watch that. You see how I did all of that within the repository. But this approach is to see how we can do all of that manually uh, from within the component context itself. So let's log this to the screen and then run the job so we can see the file that's coming in. So T log row, this is a very common company that I've been using to just print the records to the screen. So if you go ahead, run this, what I expect this to do is it's going to read that file, pull the data from that file and print it to screen. Very easy, very straightforward. So very straightforward. Now, what does this have to do with context variables and, and why is that important? And why did I go through all the steps to talk about context variables and starting with building a very simple job like this? Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at this component that we just worked with. What we can see here is I'm pointing to a file home and all this directory referencing this file. Now, in a typical organization, as a developer, you're going to be working in a development environment. So it's going to be a development instance, either on your local machine or you're going to be pointing to a dev, a dev server. And if there's a file sitting on that dev server, your path, the path that you're going to be pointing to that file might be different. Now, you've you finished developing, you've put in everything like this, now you need to promote your job to production. Well, one way to do it is you can come in here and manually update this file path to whatever you have in production. Let's just take for example, let's say this was going to, this was a dev, so let's say this was pointing to dev, uh, the path included dev in there and this is your path and then in production now you needed to update this path to point to your production uh, server so that the value here the, the file there is actually referencing to a production file you can see how how impractical that quickly becomes having to each time you're updating jobs and it's really really not not scalable one way to solve the problem and let me keep this clean one way to solve that problem is leveraging what we call context variables within talent and it's available within the context variable tab so if we switch over from components we're going over to the context variable tab and this gives us access uh, to access the, the uh, what we call context variables so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a simple context variable here we're going to use it then i'm going to talk a little bit more about why that is powerful so let's copy so select, copy this path. Let's copy that. When we come in here, we can create, by clicking on the green button, a new context variable. And what do we want? We want the file path here listed as a context variable. Now, the question is, we can put in a comment in here, right? Let's just say this is path to the file, a simple uh, comment. And then we can uh, paste in that value that we want in here. That we want in here. So uh, very straightforward stuff. We've defined a variable. We have the value to that variable. Now, if you come back to our job, instead of manually hand coding this or writing this value, this file name in here, we can delete that and then make it run as a context variable. And the way we do that to access it as a context variable is you start typing context dot, you hold down the, the control key, press the space button. So hold down control key, press the space button. Now it gives you the options. And if you can see here, I have the option here of context uh, file path. And now I have it on the screen. You can type this if you wanted to, but I, I just gave you the shortcut control key space. So now, instead of manually writing that path here, I've defined a context variable within this job 
I've put in the value there and I'm simply re referencing my context variable here. Everything is the same, uh, but instead of manually hand coding that, I'm using a context variable. So let's go ahead, run this job and see that the result that we get is the same as we got it before. So the same result, right? Now, I'm sure you're asking, but still we have a context variable defined within this job. If I'm changing environment, I need to still come in here and change the context variable within this job, right? You haven't gotten much, much, most performance. This is where it gets inter interesting. If you switch back over to the repository, away from the job, so let's step, let's step back. Let's take two step backwards to look at the big picture. So let's go to the to the repository area. One of the things that we have here is called context. One of the tabs, uh, the, 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 the entries here is called context. And so here we can define context variables and then use it across jobs. So what I'll do is I'll define a context variable here. We're going to go into the job. We're going to leverage that within the job. And I'm going to show how if you had a thousand jobs, you can define a single context variable and then use that context variable across a thousand jobs. So that if a file name changes, instead of going through a thousand jobs to change that file name, you change it once and every job picks it. If you're trying to go from dev to prod, instead of changing the, the path in every single file, you change it once within your context, ver context here and every single job picks it. Very, very powerful when you're talking about doing development the right way across multiple environments and making sure you're following the software development lifecycle best practices, SDLC. So let's go ahead. We create a context group. That's the first thing that we need to do. You can create a folder and then create a group into it. So let's give this group lecture demo i think i can come up with a more creative name but lecture demo should be should be good for now we're talking about context variable sometimes i'll do cxt all right give it a good purpose give it a description and we should be good now it brings up this interface where we can you know configure the context variable and and set it up so what we did before within the job we're going to do the same thing here but we're doing it at the level of the repository. So what I'll do is I'll add a new file path. File path, again, give it a comment as we did before, and then give it a value. So I still have the value and I just pasted that value. So this could be the value in my development environment. Now, here's the question. What if you had a development environment, a stage, a UAT, you know, a test, a production environment and you need different values for this file path so that when you're moving across those environments it's easy for you to use the correct path uh, depending on the environment what we can do here is uh, in addition to adding this green button which gives you a new uh, uh, variable we can use this green button to the right which can configure the context for us so if i click on it right here i have a default if i do new I can add a new context. I can say my new context will be dev, right? I can add a new one and I will say test stage. It's a little bit redundant to do have stage and UAT, but let's just call it UAT. Everything you can imagine under the sun for environments. Let's put it in here and prod. So now I have my, uh, of course, I can always delete the default. But I do have my dev, test, stage, and prod, and all, all available. So here, you can see the different environments. I can edit them if I wanted to. But you always have the default and everything else. Right? You always have the default and everything else. So let's click OK. Now, I think I clicked back accidentally. So now, in addition to my file path, what you notice is I can define the value that I want for file path in dev, in production, in stage, in test, in UAT. So I can give those different values that I want here. So my production server name could be different than what my dev server name is or my staging server name is. So I can give the name that I want for production. I can give the name that I want for stage. I can give the name that I want for test, UAT, and you name it, right? And you do it once in here. And then here you can also select what you want as your default to be. I can select dev to be my default. So 
let's say if I wanted uh, uh, this to have, you know, say dev, the file name was D, D's customer for dev. For as an example, you can give the different values that you want there. For now, I'll just keep it very simple because everything is the same for me working locally. Yeah, but just to understand, you have the ability to give the different values for the different contexts that are available in there. All right. So now, once you've defined all of those within your context, again in the repository, let's click finish. Now, if you look in there, you have your lecture demo context that has been defined. You can define this for files. You can define the context to the connections to databases. You can define this for connections to web services or just values that you want to, to, to use. It really is up to you to, to figure out what you want as a context variable. But if I come back to my job, to this job, so what we did here was we defined a context variable that's pulling a path. And we went in here within this job and we were able to define one and we leverage. Like I mentioned, this is an improvement, but it doesn't take us 100% there. Why? Because if you need to update this value, well, if you had a thousand jobs and each of these jobs had their own context variables, you're going to have to go through each job, open it up, come into context, and then make the changes. That can be very time consuming, as you can imagine. The alternative is let's go ahead and delete this is to pull in what we define in the repository and there are several ways to do that you can click on this uh, little icon here and it's going to list everything that you have available in your context repository and you can go ahead and select and say hey i want to bring in the file path into this job and you do okay now i have my file path i brought in here all these values that were defined now available for me here uh within this job to use let's just minimize this a little bit and what i can do is i can see the file path available within uh the job here for me to use another approach which i'll show is let's delete that select it and click delete the red button always delete I can click on that and bring that in as well. So I can click on that and bring that in as well. And one of the things that as I bring this in for, for both approaches, I want us to notice is it now brings more, right? So instead of just the value that I define, you can see the value available for prod, dev, test, stage within my job. So if I wanted to make a change to production, I go in here and i make a change so let's go in here to production first of all let's before we make that change look at the, the value here for production notice that it's just customer but if i go in now to my context back in the repository and i make a change to the production value so let's type prod here let's type prod finish yes so what that yes is doing is that whatever change that i made in this repository is going to propagate that change to all the jobs that are leveraged in this context because you can be using this context in multiple jobs so if i do okay on that it's propagating that if i come back here remember i didn't make a change if i look at the value for production now you see the value has been updated to prod right so if you think about this if i had a thousand jobs and my server changed my server name changed once i can change it once here and all the thousand jobs will get reflected with what has happened so i'm sure you're asking now we have four or five different definitions of file path available here for us to use uh, if I'm running this job, which one exactly is going to be used? Like, which one am I going to use when I'm running this job Very uh, when I click the run button? So let's switch over to run. Clear this. And what you notice is on the right side here, there is the... Let's actually look at this. This doesn't change. We're still using the context. But if I'm going to run, you see it says run job context vars, right? So it's, you know, it's telling me that I do... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be running this job 
But what I can do is I can select the environment that I want to run from, right? So I can run it as dev test station prod. So let's run it as uh, dev. So if I click on that, it's going to pull the dev values and it's going to run my job. Good. So yes, let's prove that this is actually using those values there. Remember, we changed the prod value and we added prod in front of the, of the name. But guess what? I don't have a file on my desktop called prod. Uh, customers right this is on my desktop there's no file called prod customers i can show you that but in the previous videos you can see so let's change it to run as prod what will happen is it's going to look for a file called prod underscore customers it wouldn't find that file and we should expect to see a file not found error there you go so file not found error meaning uh there's no file in that directory because i changed the name and just by defining the context in the repository and using that within the jobs, I have that flexibility to switch environments as flexibly as what you're seeing here on the screen, right? And you're not just defining context just for file name. I could define this as a context variable. I can define every single input here as a context variable. That way, uh, as I'm, you know, updating and moving between environments, instead of having to manually, you know, put things in here, I can just pull things from my context variables and I can leverage that as well. So this is a very, very, very powerful uh, thing to be familiar with and something that, you know, it's, 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 um, it really helps uh, development, uh, the, the development process to be very uh, streamlined and to be very straightforward. One other thing that I want to show is in the previous uh, couple of lectures, we talked about creating a connection to uh, MySQL database or to databases or to files. So let's take a look at, at what we did. One of the connections that we created was this connection. Uh, it's going to the MySQL on my environment, and I put in all the information in here. It's going to this MySQL environment, local instance. So just a simple local host. Very straightforward stuff. But I'm going to switch, and I'm going to make a copy of this connection to see how, instead of putting all those values by hand, manually hand coding them we can make them into a context variable so now that i have this as context let's open up that connection so just double click on the connection click next if you notice i'm putting all these values here i'm typing all these values here right there might be a situation where well what if i want to switch this from localhost to a remote server for my production environment does that mean i'm gonna have to open up this connection and manually update that right that really can be get out of control really quickly the other approach is also to leverage context again talent allows us to you know uh, not just manually create the context and let and use them here which we could by typing context dot whatever the name is but we can as we did in in the in the in the data integration job but we can actually once we're creating the connection once we're done with that and we test that the connection is successful we can actually export the values that are used within that connections as context variables we can either create new context variables in the repository or we can reuse existing context variables in the repository. So in this case, let's create new ones because I don't have some existing ones that are available for us to use. So we select create new context variables, click next. It asks for what the name should be. Of course, you can fill in the details that are needed here, purpose, description, uh, the version, and every other thing that needs to be filled. Now we click next. Now what it does, it, it pulls out those values the values from the connection that were available that we saw like the the let's just take a look here the login the port the server name and additional parameters username password and all of the details and it lists them here right i can add different environments here and say hey let's do this for test for example let's do this for prod right because if you think about it your prod server might be or will be in most cases different from your other environment so i can set up those environments change the servers that i want here uh, for those different environments and you know make sure that the values are the values that i actually want for the different environments so if you go ahead and click finish for this i've defined the context variables here with the different values 
And now, instead of seeing the, the individual values that are listed in here, I get the reference to the context variables that have been defined. So if I click finish on this guy, and I do yes, now I have a connection that don't have the hand coded values, but it does have it referencing a connection, uh, a context variable here uh, that I can update once and everything else gets updated. So this is how we can really use context variables in terms of segmenting environment and making uh, your, your life cycle and your code promotion a lot easy. It's a very powerful concept uh, to use and it's something that really, uh, the way I say this is it differentiates the, the people, the amateurs uh, that are actually building you know, workflows and jobs and following some very good best practices from people that are just hacking things together to get the job done, right? Because if I'm a manager or a boss and I'm looking at your code and you're hand coding everything, I'm not going to be very happy with that, right? I want you to be using variables so that if we're changing environments, things will be very streamlined and very straightforward uh, to understand and to follow. So just to uh, switch back here and do a recap of what we talked about, using context variables in the repository as well as, as built-in. Uh, it's a very powerful concept. It's something that you should have under your tool belt, uh, be extremely familiar with. It gives you a lot of capabilities, a lot of flexibilities when developing a lower environment and then having to promote that to higher level environments so that your jobs is very flexible and you don't have to do a lot of manual changes. So uh, this, is, uh, this is a very powerful concept. Uh, in the next lecture, we're going to be uh, switching gears a little bit, talking about error management, generating warnings. You know, sometimes you're building flows, there are going to be errors. How do you manage those errors, uh, gener generate warnings and alerts so that other people can be aware of what's going on within your job, basically, as you're doing your data integration. So stay tuned for that.